this is what you guys have been asking for. I'm going to go over the entire bike. I'm going to go from front to back. I'm going to go over all the upgrades and how everything works. Starting in the front, the handlebar setup looks nothing like how the bike comes standard. I've worked really hard at making it as clean as possible. If we're going from left to right on the handlebar, the first thing is the throttle. Having a throttle makes a big difference, and I'm going to go over that in a second when I get to the pedal assist and how I steer when my hands are on the crank. The next thing is the brakes. I've upgraded to Shimano Saints. They're four piston brakes, tons of stopping power. When I want to stop, I want my bike to stop. The front brakes are split and the manufacturer makes a nice rubberized splitter with clean cable routing out to the calipers. The next thing which I'm really proud of is I installed this minimalist computer. The bike comes with a huge gaudy computer that has a separate controller. This thing is super tiny. The controller is actually part of the unit. So it's super minimal and it just gives you the necessary information. The next thing is the remote lockout for the rear shock. I rarely use it because I forget to unlock it. I'll be on a climb and then on the downhill, I'll be doing it with a locked out shock. That's not good. If I'm climbing on pavement, that's when I use it. I just installed this light for winter. It's made by Magic Shine. It's 1400 lumens, super bright, works great. It comes with removable cells, so you can switch them out if they die. I'll get to the shifting when I talk about the drivetrain, but what I want to show you is the cable routing. The bike comes with the shifter mounted vertical and the cables curving down and then forward. I rotated the shifter so that the cables go forward first. That eliminates a curve in the cabling and I set it so that the brake lever is between the cables. The bike comes standard with RockShox Monarchs. They're great shocks. They're real easy to adjust and lock out on the fly. The stem is connected to two steering rods, which are connected to a wheel assembly. And that's how it steers. Moving back now, I've really worked on trying to keep this cable routing as clean as possible. Now we get to the fun part, the crank and the power assist. The manufacturer makes these handles custom. They're ergonomically shaped really comfortable and strong. This is a 500 watt Bafung 8 fun mid-drive. Total game changer. My first bike was fully manual and whoever was riding with me might as well have been walking on foot. My rides were five to six miles. This has extended my range and I'm just keeping up with the crew now. I always keep it on the lowest setting just enough to keep up with my boys. This is a pedal assist motor it works in two ways. It either helps you while you're cranking or you can use the throttle. The throttle is super important because it allows me to propel myself when both my hands are on the handlebars. This enables me to navigate single track and technical situations like steep rock gardens where I need precision steering. Now the question I get all the time is how do you steer when your hands are on the hand crank? Super simple. See these cables attached to the chest pad? They're attached to the bottom of the stem here. And you can see when I turn the wheel, the chest pad moves back and forth. So the answer to the question is, my hands on the hand crank, I steer with my chest. This is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. The max I've gotten out of it so far is 24 miles but that was with a pretty high demand on it. I think I can get even further. Before I take this off, I wanted to show you the carbon fiber. It's all very high quality, very strong, very smooth looking. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this leg cradle so I can show you the full drivetrain. Okay, I've got the drivetrain exposed here. Now, please forgive the sand. My bike's a little dirty right now. I don't really have time to clean it up. Just ignore this bracket right here. That's the bracket for the lift. I'm going to go over that in another video. I get asked, why the gold chain? My answer is, why not? I want to draw your attention to an upgrade I'm very proud of, and that's this chain tensioner here. This is the minimalist downhill chain tensioner made by Roloff. The chain tensioner that comes standard on the bike is longer, 
so it sticks out further. If you ever bottom out, that's the first thing that breaks. I've actually broken five of them. I finally upgraded to this. This is held in place by lock washers. If it hits, it's not breaking. It's super minimal and clean, doesn't stick out. You can see where I've experimented with different mount points and where the pin broke through the hole when I bought them down. On the intermediate hub, I have two absolute black narrow wide chain rings. This helps with chain retention. They grip the chain and it's rarely gonna come off. Again, another Rollhoff downhill chain tensioner. Super minimalist, strong, really clean. And now the pride and joy of the whole bike, the Roll Off Speed Hub. This thing is 14 internal gears. And the thing about it is you don't need to be moving to switch gears. It goes into whatever gear you put it in, whether you're standing still or not. That's huge for an adaptive rider. I don't have the luxury of being able to step off the bike and walk it through something. If I get stuck in a high gear, I just drop it to granny, boom, and I'm not stuck. The thing about the roll off too is the shifting is like butter. Watch this. It's beautiful. It's so easy to shift. I'm rocking the Maxxis Minion downhill tires. These are 2.8 mid fats. I love these. Riding in Southern California, there's a lot of loose terrain. These are perfect for it. I get asked a lot why I'm not tubeless up front. With these wheels sticking way out, I'm always catching branches, flaying spokes on rocks. And every time I have to fix the wheel and re it, I have to re-tape it and reseat it and set it all up every time. It's just too much work. It's a lot easier just to throw a tube and some slime in there every time. I am running tubeless in the rear, however. This wheel takes a pretty big pounding, so I get a lot of pinch flats. Being tubeless is important for the rear. A couple things I want to call to your attention back here. I'm rocking a cush core inside the tubeless wheel. The cush core is a foam insert that gives the sidewalls a little more strength. This is the gearbox for the roll-off speed hub. The manufacturer of the bike mounts this vertical on the back of the bike behind the rear dropout. That makes for another curve in the cabling though. I mounted it on the bottom here so the cable faces forward instead of up. That takes a curve out of the cable. Again, really clean cable routing. With the roll-off, you have to have a four bolt brake rotor. I live on the beach and as you can see, this rotor rusted right away. So I bought this new rotor from Hope Technologies and we'll see how it works. I'm rocking Saints in the rear as well. It's got four pistons, tons of braking power. All right, now let's watch it all working together. That's a thing of beauty. <laughs> 